around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal, the first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. have to come with me, Chester. I'm coming, Mr. Dillon. Keeping up as best I can. Well, if that's all the gumption you got, you're better off back at the office. Well, just let me rest a little bit, Mr. Dillon. What's the matter? Are you sick? I, I just ain't got no spunk to me these days. What have you seen, Doc? Oh, man, no. Last time I asked him to give me a tonic, he wanted to charge me a whole dollar for it. And at that, he wouldn't make no guarantee he'd cure me. Look, Chester, I'm only going to the telegraph office. There's no need for you to come along. Oh, no, I don't want to shirk my job. Will no. you go back to the office and lie down? Oh, I, I couldn't do that, Mr. Dillon. Lying down's the best cure I know for being tired, Chester. Uh, 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 no, sir, it ain't. Uh, pardon me. That, that's one of the worst things a body can do. Lay himself down when he's tired. It isn't. It is for me. I get to hear myself breathing so hard, uh, owing to how tired I am. And it just clean wears me out listening to me breathe. I'm dead. Well, no, I do declare. What? What? Look, look, look yonder. There's that nice little Miss Curtin loading her wagon over to Jones's. Yeah? Now, now, now where at is Rob Curtin? He ain't loading up his own wagon. Well, I don't know, Chester, but I... Well, really... you may be able to stand by and watch a lady do a man's work, but it's something I just cannot abide. Poor little thing like that. Lifting him. Testing them big heavy things with that. Now then, Miss Curtin, you just leave them feed sacks to us. Miss Curtin? Oh, Marshal Chester. Well, they are might heavy. Yeah, for a little bit of a thing like you, maybe, but for me, I <laughs> ah. There. Uh, you wanna grab the other end of that potato sack, Mr. Dillon. Well, you can make it, can't you? Uh, well, if you don't mind. You try it. No, Mr. I... That'd be better for you. All right. It? Here we go. <laughs> oh, well, I do thank you. And just wait till I tell Rob who gave me a hand. Uh, anything else to go in, Miss Curtin? Well, not that I know of, Chester. How is Rob, anyway? Fine as silk. Thank you, Marshal. Good. Well, you can see for yourself. Look here, Rob. All the nice help I've had. Oh, hello, Marshal. Well, well, now... I didn't know but what you was home ailing or maybe working one or the other. Guess you two took care of all the heavy stuff. I, I was waiting on Jonas. He went out back to fetch me these nails. I'm much obliged to you. Well, you I... folks just never get out our way. I'd be pleased if you'd come take supper with us sometime. Oh, that's very kind of you, Miss Curtin. Uh, we better be starting back. Thanks again for the help. Don't mention it, Rob. I suppose it's worth a small mention. All right. We'll hope to see you soon now. All right. Yeah. Well, aren't you going to wave to him, Jesse? Well, I'd like to, Mr. Dillon. I declare I am just clean played out. Sheriff, uh, this sheriff, what's his name, man? Yeah, Stringer. No, Doc, I don't know him by name. Might know him by sight. In Miami, Texas. Now, that's a new name on me. That's the town of the panhandle. Last time I rode through it was too small to have a sheriff. I guess the cattle drives have fattened it up some. Yeah, let me see that telegram again, will you? Oh, yeah, sure. Well, yeah, let me see here. It says, uh, bringing prisoner in, need your help. 
meet afternoon stage. And it's signed Ab Stringer Sheriff. And it's Miami, Texas. Yeah, yeah that's what I thought. Yeah. Well, is I'm wrong? Well, it doesn't say anyone's wounded, or it doesn't say anyone needs a doctor. No, but it says he needs help. If he's had trouble, somebody's likely to be hurt. Well, that fellow there is the last passenger they had. I, I sure didn't see two men get off together. No, I didn't either, but that one's wearing a star. Uh, you Ab Stringer, mister? Well, you're bound to be Marshal Dillon. Yeah, that's right. This is Doc Adams. Proud yeah. to meet you, sir. Yes, sir. How do you do, sir? Well, where is he, Stringer? Where's who? Well, the telegram here says you're bringing in a prisoner. Do you mind if I look at that? Uh, no, go right ahead. Thank you. Well, I declare. Oh, I do declare. Well, one thing, he got my name right. I got to give him that. Well, you sent this telegram, didn't you? Oh, I sent you a telegram, all right, Marshal Dillon, but... Oh, that fool, Slim Ballou. You know him? Telegraph operator down to Dalhart? Uh, no, no, I can't say Well, I've known him. I've known him years, you know. We were jawing about me taking a fellow prisoner, all right, and I guess that's what blew old Slim off of the track. No. Well, then you haven't got a prisoner then, huh? Well, I not only haven't got him, Marshal, I'm counting on you to help me get him. Well, now, they sure are a fierce-looking crew, ain't they, Marshal? Yeah, some of them look mighty rough, all right, mm. Stringer. <laughs> Of course, I say these wanted pictures, they serve their purpose. No? Looking through them, keep a man in out of the heat, or the rain, or the cold. <laughs> Ain't worth dried beans to help a man find the North County he's looking for. Well, they start a pretty good fire on a cold morning. <laughs> Don't they, though? <laughs> you haven't come across your man in these? No. no. Wouldn't be the first time I went fishing into a mess of these and didn't get my catch. Of course, might be he ain't stayed one place long enough to get his picture took. Yeah. Uh, that name you gave me, Sam Frazier, that doesn't mean a thing to me. Well, changing your name is just like rolling over in bed, Marshal. Ain't never a thing to it. Changing your face, that's another story that comes a mite harder. Yeah, but I've seen them try. Oh, yeah, many's a time. And they get by with it now and again. You know, I found out a long time ago, if a man sets out to fool you, and he's half bright about it, he can get the job done. But you know this Frazier. You'd know him outside. Oh, and he'd know me. Uh, well, here's the latest batch of wanted posters. Thank you. If uh, he isn't in them, we'll have to try something else, I guess. Yeah. We're used to that, you and me. Is that a fact? Yeah. No, it's trying something else. Yeah, well, that's the job. No, sir, Marshal. No, sir. You just ain't got a picture of Sam Fraser in your collection. Uh -huh. Well, if you're pretty sure he's in Dodge, you better have a look around, I guess. <laughs> now, Marshal, I didn't come all this way on pretty sure. I know he's in Dodge. Or was. Oh, sandy-haired fellow. About 30. Huh? That's Sam. Yeah. And about half the other men in Dodge. Well... <sighs> Just this one tiny difference in Sam, Marshal. He robbed a bank and killed a man. I tell you, Matt, wouldn't hurt to study Ab a while. He's the best-natured lawman I've ever seen. Oh? You got some kind of idea I'm not jovial, Kitty? <laughs> you got some kind of idea you are? <laughs> no, no, I haven't. I'm about half serious, though, Matt. Last night, he was the last to walk out of here on his own two feet. Sam Noon and Carrie, the other two of us. And who were they? Ruth Connors and Ed Crouch. Uh, Stringer spent most of the evening with them, did he? Well, it didn't seem to me he was playing any favorites. One time or the other, he played a hand of poker or had a drink with Evelyn here. Why? I was just thinking. Ruth and Ed both fit the description of the man Stringer's trailer. Tall, sandy-haired, about 30. Oh, what did keep him from arresting one of them? Uh, nothing if he was the right man. Uh, Kitty, the name 
name Sam Frazier. Does that mean anything to you? Hmm, not a particle. As long as I've lived here, I can't remember anyone named Frazier. Well, where's Ab today? He hasn't been in here. Well, he went off early this morning with Doc on some calls. I don't know, I do. Since he can't seem to find this Frazier in town, he might have hired on with some spread near here. Not a bad idea. Well, a man wanted for murder likely wouldn't stick in a town like Dodge too long. Well, I'll be darned. What's the matter? Rob Curtin just came in. I bet he hasn't been in here three times since he and Sarah got married. <laughs> Doesn't look like you'll make any money off of him. He's not stopping at the bar. <laughs> Hello, Rob. Oh. Good to see you. Miss Kitty. Marshal. How are you, Rob? Sarah asked me to drop this by for you, Miss Kitty. Huh? It's that mending she was to do. Well, thanks very much for bringing it in. Will you have a beer with us? Oh, uh, thank you, no. I, I got to get back home. I just came in to switch those nails I bought from Jonas the other day. Seeing I was coming, Sarah said I should bring this by. Well, you tell her I'll have more for her to do next time she comes in. If she's got the time. Oh, Sarah makes time, Miss Kitty. I don't know how she manages. She says she just can't abide idle hands. <laughs> She'll be coming into town tomorrow or the next day. Fine. Uh, Sam will pay you, Rob. Oh, much obliged to you. Uh, Rob, you don't have any new hands at the ranch by any chance, do you? <laughs> Same old hands, Marshal. Mine and Sarah. You run that spread alone? Now, you see something wrong in that? <laughs> no, nothing except the hard work of it. Oh, we're willing for that, Sarah and me. Well, afternoon to you. It'd be a fool thing for me to try. It's the truth, Chester. Just ask Marshal Dill, and he'd been all through that part of Texas. You mean to tell me the whole of that town is dug out storm cellar? There are two buildings in that town that stand above the ground. That's what I'm telling you. A man riding through at night would swear there's no town there at all. <laughs> and riding through in the light of day, he'd be sure of it. Well, that makes folks living like sacks of potatoes. Uh, of course, that's cool living, dug down in the earth that way. And a panhandle summer will give you cause to want cool living. <laughs> but it's the winds, you know. It's the cyclones. That's how come they live that way. Uh, well, a cyclone can't blow away what's not standing there in the first place. I can see that. Sure. Now, some folks say that that's how come nobody can talk a Texan down. Because, you see, anybody learns to talk against the wind like that, he ain't going to be out-talked by no mortal man. Well, now... <laughs> Ab, you, you got me so I don't know what's joshing and... <laughs> <laughs> well, that don't really bother you, does it, Chip? Yeah, oh, no, sir, I can admire it. All this laughing and fun and seeing you got trouble, you're hiding. Well, everybody's got troubles right enough. Yeah, but you just ain't one bit closer to finding that Sam Fraser now, are you? Well, I haven't found him yet. But now, you know, with all this looking behind me, I must be getting closer. Now, wouldn't you say? <laughs> <laughs> I do declare you got a way of seeing the bright side for sure. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Oh, well, well Miss Curtin, I... Oh, I am sorry, ma'am. It's my fault, Chester. Rob says if I don't quit backing out of doors, I'll get trampled one day. <laughs> well, let me gather up the good oh, boy. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Chester. Oh, uh, uh, Miss Curtin, this here is Mr. Ab Stringer. Well, you're mighty kind to help, Mr. Stringer. I'm very pleased to meet you. It's Mrs. Curtin, is it? Yes, sir. Mrs. Curtin. Well, uh, won't we should just put these parcels in your wagon for you, ma'am? Well, if you don't mind. Seems like you load my wagon more than Rob does lately, Chester. <laughs> oh, he ain't with you today, huh? No, he's at the ranch. I had just these few things to get and some errands to run. Rob says there wasn't any man's work to it. <laughs> now, you tell the marshal I was serious as could be about you taking supper with us. Just any time you're out our way. Oh, yes, ma'am, I'll do that. I'll remind him, sure. Oh, and I thank you kindly for your help, Mr. Stringer. I'm glad to oblige you, lady, ma'am. Here, allow me to give you a hand up. Oh, thank you. Here. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Right, here, here's your lines, ma'am. Oh, 
next thing you know, you'll be driving me home. <laughs> Goodbye to you. Goodbye to you. <laughs> Goodbye. Well, I declare, if we don't get back to the office, Mr. Young will think we walked clean out of town. You go on, Chester. I'm just going over to the stable for a spell. Well, now, you ain't thinking of riding off and leaving us now. <laughs> If I told you, Chester, you'd swear I was funning you again. <laughs> well, I'd have told you sooner, but you and Clay was talking for so long, Mr. Dunn. That's not your fault, Chester. And we don't know if he followed Sarah Curt, and we just think he did. I swear I just can't get it through my head that he ain't Ab Stringer the way he's been saying. Well, Clay says he can't be, and he ought to know. He's just up from Texas. He was there when they found Ab Stringer's buddy. And they're pretty sure this fellow we've been calling Ab was the one who killed him, huh? Well, Ab Stringer was bringing in a prisoner, and this man we know showed me Ab's credentials. So he must have killed him and stole his papers. Just don't see how it could be... I swear, I, I, I never met a nicer fella. And I sure never laughed so much. Yeah, he's kept us all laughing, Chester. Maybe a little too much. You shouldn't be out here in the barn, Sarah. He'll kill you, too. All you've got to do is fill out the money, Sam. I don't have to kill you. He keeps calling you Sam. Tell him you're not who he thinks you are, Rob. Tell him. You you spare my wife, I'll give you the money. I ain't got nothing against her. I'm coming out. You wait where you are. It'll take me a minute to fetch the money. One minute. And then I start shooting again, Sam. <laughs> Bob Curtin, will you tell me what this is about? What money is there? Why does he call you Sam? Well, it is Sam. A long time ago, before you, Sarah, I, I was Sam Fraser. And this this money, it, it's not mine. Well, if it's his, why do they have to have a gun to get it from you? It's not his, Sarah. Rob. Then why? What is it? I don't understand. Sarah, there isn't time. Maybe later. Maybe I, maybe I can help you understand. Now, you stay here. You lie down flat while I take it to him. I, I want to help you, Rob. Let me help you. Then you stay there, Sarah. Sure slice that minute kind of thin, Sam Bart. I thought you were dead. But now, what kind of greeting is that between old friends? Of course, I can see you'd a lot rather I was dead. You could have kept all that money. You got your share years ago. Well, you was always more frugal than me, Sam. When I got to running again, I knew I could count on you for help. How come you still got it? Most of it's there, but not all. I, I've been working. My wife's been working. I, I was going to send it all back. To the bank we robbed? I got a life. I wanted to live it clean. Well, and taking your ma's name, hiding behind it, that's your idea of living clean? It helped. Till now. Well, Sam, we killed a man. I know. I'm paying for that every day and night of my life. The minute I heard that name meeting your woman, I knew my worries was done and gone. You can live with what's past, can't you? The killing, the, the taking oh, of the Oh, I got more killings than that to fret me. But I can live with them all fine. Now I got this money. There's blood on it. But not enough, Sam. And the way you're thinking, you're going to worry yourself to death, and I got to spare you that. I haven't even got a gun. Oh, so I see, Sam, boy. So I see. <laughs> Goodbye, Sam, boy. Hold him right there. Well, Marshal Dillon. Hey, we had an accident here. I, I saw the whole thing, Ab. Oh? The only accident was that I couldn't stop you in time. You got to jail for murder. Now, look here, Marshal. Rob Curtin was I that said time... you're going to jail, and I get your hands up. Not hardly. <laughs> You 
that bright. In a hurry, Marshal. Not hurry enough. No. You're dying. Well, I ain't lingering long. Marshal, you was helpful. You and Chester. Mind, I told you, if, if a man sets out to fool you and he's half bright about it, he can get the job done. And I... such thing. Your good has killed him. You'll not touch him now. But you can't manage it, sir. Oh, you come here now is more gall than I understand. And telling me what I can manage. You got no idea of that, Marshal. Sir, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I didn't know who he was. I lived three miles from Rob and didn't know who he was these two years now. I lived with him night and day these two years. He was Rob Curtin. And that's all he was. There was no Sam Frazier about him. And he had that money. He offered it back. Your friend, Chester's friend, your good has let him kill my Rob. Your good has given your leave. It's not going to be easy living with it, sir. I hope it isn't. I hope you crawl with it the rest of your days. I'm sorry, sir. I'm terribly sorry. Sure, Marshal. I know. Only question is, sorrow don't quite fix things, does it? Produced and directed in Hollywood by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The story was specially written for Gunsmoke by Kathleen Height, with editorial supervision by John Meston. Featured in the cast were Lawrence Dobkin, Vic Perrin, and Gene Bates. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. This is George Walsh inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents another story on Gun Smoke.